All right, this is Dr. Laura Mowden, continuing on in a series of main lectures addressing um, aluminum sequencing. So I left off talking about how you make a library and how you attach the library to a solid surface called an aluminum flow cell. And we left off looking at this picture. So here's the surface that's a flow cell. Okay. On the flow cell, here are the little graphs, graphs or oligos, the P7 and the P5 that poke up off the surface. And then here is a single strand, and then the other strand from one fragment from our library. Okay. So now what? Now essentially what we're going to do is we're going to make what's called a clonal cluster, which means we're going to go from one of each of these molecules attached to the surface to many. And we're going to do that by running about 35 cycles of synthesis reactions. And those synthesis reactions are called bridge amplification, and they're kind of a modified version of PCR. So here we go, okay? So here are the two strings we were just looking at attached to the graphs, and you'll notice that the graph is 5 prime attached, 3 prime here, 5 prime attached, 3 prime here. And you should remember that all DNA synthesis happens using the template in the 3 to 5 direction and extending the new DNA by adding to the 3 prime growing end or going 5 to 3. And so what we're going to do is we're going to synthesize DNA using DNA polymerase and routine nucleotides. These are just regular nucleotides. So this dashed line is showing the synthesis of a strand that will be complementary to this. And this is also showing the synthesis of a new strand that will be complementary to this. So it's just very routine synthesis. And we're left with this, two double-stranded molecules attached at one of their ends to the flow cell surface. And then what we do, and this will seem a little bit weird, we wash off these original molecules. So this, and this, notice that it is gone here, okay? This and this is gone here. It's not there. So we're left with the these molecules which are firmly attached to the flow cell. Okay, they're actually anchored right on. And we've got a three prime end poking up, and that's pretty important too. So there's a lot of flipping DNA strands around, and paying attention to the orientation of these molecules is really key to understanding what is going on. So now we've got this, and then what? All right, so what we're going to do then are 35 rounds of bridge amplification. So here are the single strands that we just looked at in the slide before, and these are the various sequences. I've labeled some of them, but not all of them over here, so that you can relate this image to the one that we looked at earlier when we were talking about library preparation. And this is a simplified cartoon that shows the process of going from a few to many. And these are what are called clonal clusters. Okay, so here are our single strands, just like this and this. And we're going to modify the environment the, the liquid environment that is flowing across the surface of this cell, which will force these strands to bridge. And the reason that they bridge is, if you look over here at, on this strand here, right, you've got this three prime sequence, and it is complementary to the P7 graph sequence. So all around this, poking up out of this flow cell, are P7s. This is going to base pair with that. This is complementary to the P5 oligos, and they're also all around in this environment. So this is going to bend, and that red bit there is going to base pair with a P5 oligo poking up nearby. And that's going to create these structures. And you'll notice the blue-red blue color that the illustrator for this figure used to show the different grafting sequences. So we bridge, and then we do synthesis, because when this is bridged over, you've got a situation where you can continue from the graph and you can synthesize back and you can make the complement. Okay, so we do that. Now we have a double stranded DNA molecule. We change the chemical environment, make them both pop up straight, and we've gone from one to two at each position, which is kind of routine PCR, right? Except for it's in physical place, right? And then we do it again. And so in doing so, we generate these little clusters that are all identical, except for their orientation. And they're poking up, and they all have 3' hydroxyl groups. 
poking up and out of the top. So we're left with a situation where we have what is called multiple clonal clusters. We have multiple versions of these exact molecules in clusters. Okay? And why do you go from a few to many? Usually or often, in, in, in actually always in DNA synthesis, that's for signal. It's so that when we're doing our sequencing, we get big bursts of light instead of little teeny bursts of light so that we can actually detect it accurately. And then what? And this is kind of weird and maybe not very intuitive, but it's really what happens. So here's the clonal cluster that we would get on the left after doing bridge amplification of this. Okay, We get a mixture of those molecules. And then we're going to do this like crazy sounding thing. We're going to wash off all the P5. So all the ones that were anchored with red, which were the, were the P5 strands, we washed them off. And now we're left with one truly identical clonal cluster. And now we are ready for synthesis. So that is um, the process of making clonal clusters. And you have to do that before you can start sequencing, which I'll talk about in the next mini lecture.